Okay. Hey everyone. So this video is going to be a few quick topics. Um, so I am I'm currently on my break. I'm home from Utah. I'm home from nationals. Uh, and I'm home from my office trip. And this is like... It's supposed to be uh, a week off before school. Um, that being said, it's been pretty busy. I've been tackling a bunch of projects, most of, most of which are pretty secret, um, but they're pretty cool. I have to say, they're, they're probably one of the coolest things I've ever done. Um, a lot of my stuff is like you never hear about. So the first thing I'll talk about is dye. Let's talk about dyeing plastic. So I haven't dyed something in a while. And that's because of... Oh, I should turn off the fan. Sorry. So, logistical issues and quality. So, the old dye, it would wear off. Um, although the colors were vivid, they would get on other stickers, and it wasn't as permanent as I wanted. And over normal wear and tear, it would come off, and it wasn't, it wasn't very good. It was great as, like, a novelty and something to put on your shelf, which is what it was intended to be. Um, but as for practical application to my standards, it wasn't good enough. So, um, Blake and Sarah Strong, they said that they only, well, Sarah said she can only use purple and that's why she doesn't use stickerless. And then Blake, he wanted a purple cube a while ago. And I tried a few things like this is like an early test. This is actually a coating. Um, that didn't work too well. This is like another thing. This was infused in there like through a different process. That didn't work either. I have another one that was a failure. Um, and then this, if you look, follow my Instagram recently, you saw like it was a stupid easy process where I just had like two chemicals, uh, some dye. I dipped a Volk piece in there and then I washed it off and instantly it was purple. Um, that's pretty much the new process. Yeah. Um, I'm, a, I'm one step above that now, like, I have an even better process, and this just came out. Look at how vivid and consistent this is. Like, this is so perfectly and beautifully consistent. Like, holy crap. And the coolest thing about this process is it goes deeper into the plastic, and it's stupidly fast. Like, you dip it in there, you take it out, you rinse it off, it's done. Um, and for proof, you can go to my Instagram and see it in action. Um, I don't feel like doing it right now. Um, even though I could if I wanted to. Uh, but yeah, basically, the next step is to see if it lasts through wear and tear. And so far, it actually does. So these are a few test pieces that came out. Um, these were failures. These are just tests. Um, and it's still a work in process. Like this, this was promising. There's like no splotches whatsoever, but early models like this, this is another purple one for Blake. Uh, this is a vault power. Um, he's going to sticker this up. So once it's stickered, um, it'll hide like almost all the imperfections, but it has some splotching. If you can see it, I'm holding it really close to the camera so you can see it. Um, and I don't like that. It should be a consistent, perfect thing. Like you see this? that that's the money right there that's that's what I want but this it's 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 got that worn look and I don't like that um, and then this is another one this is a stickerless um, this one's the one I put on Instagram but you see that dot right there I splashed it with chemicals and that basically that basically ruined it that because I can't send this out with splotches on it um, but this was on Instagram and it was nice but I redid it. Let's see if I can find the one that I redid. Right here. And look at that. Ooh, wait. Um, it's not as perfect as it looks, but this is after it was redone. And look at that shine. Look at that gleam. Um, that is what I want. And the performance is nice. People are wondering if the plastic is different. It's a little different. Um, this is actually like treated and then dyed just for effect, um, but these, they're, they're only a little different. They perform just like normal plastic. This one's like gamma treated, if you can hear the difference in sound. Um, this one's a little quieter, it's a little slower, um, but this is the one I'm sending out to Blake, and this one 
is nice. And you can see side by side how, well, I should, let me solve a face. That should be a face. You can see that this is a deeper purple and you see how on this side it's less consistent. Um, let me see if I can get some different angles. You can see how this is a much more solid purple compared to this where there's more imperfections and this one has like a lot of imperfections and you can see like the gradual process um, eventually I'm gonna do like a big average with this and just keep with it carry it around and like you can scratch it and even rub it like here this is like normal skin I mean this is like dyed this is a uh, and it won't come off um, especially the scratch test um, that's the most promising thing so I want to see how this handles wear and tear and if if it handles it well which I suspect it will but you have to make sure with this um, we might have the power to make dyed puzzles again and with, with the speed that I can do it it's scalable at that point so that's that uh, next things uh, gamma process so Gamma still has some work to do, and I'm going to tell you what it is. So, uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in my earlier videos, but the gamma process, it it changes the plastic so the plastic becomes permeable, and then you can add things to it. So, I made a, a bunch of MF3RSs and some GAN 354s, and I took a bunch of things and I put it into the plastic. So, a lot of people are talking about like self-lubricating plastics. I have some experience testing that out and I actually got the actual pieces, the plastic in the pieces to soak up liquid silicone. You would think that works really well, like, oh my god, now this plastic is going to be amazing. It, it isn't. When it soaked up the silicone, it was actually really, really, really slow and it wasn't fun to turn at all. What we're looking for is some compound it can soak up and still be hard when it soaks up certain things it actually becomes soft and that's too soft means it's going to be too slow so water is an okay it makes a squeaky feeling sometimes but water is slow depending on how much water you use if you dry it off really fast you can control it but controlling speed for big batches is hard so when i'm thinking of gamma i have to think of a way to make it so that we can do this in big batches I've tried a bunch of other chemicals, none of which were promising. Um, it wasn't that great. Um, and if you could guess at this point, it's a derivative of gamma that is pulling the dye into the plastic for the dye. Um, but that's it's actually a binary solvent for this one. Um, but back to the original point, I need to find the right compound that can soak into the plastic and get the plastic to absorb for it to be really, really nice. And that's the missing key. Once I find that, then I wanna push Gamma with the main office so that we can have it for the consumer, you. Um, and that should be it for Gamma. Um, now, let's go on to talk about GANS 354. So, I like the 354 at Nationals, but I ruined my 354 with too many tests. Um, but I have, a, I have another one upstairs that I'll probably play around with. Um, I don't like 354 because my hands are big. I'm six feet tall and I'm basically, I'm like 190, 195 pounds. So I'm heavy, I'm big, so I have big hands. And 354, it's, it's okay. Like I can turn it and stuff, but for me, turning the MF3 RS2M, the uh, really long name, that's easier for me. So I like the bigger size. I like 56. Um, or 55, but that's like the bounding limit. People might think, oh, it's one millimeter. That's not a big difference, but that's like one millimeter in volume. So it's a cubic millimeter, like not just one cubic millimeter. It's like a big, it's bigger than you would think. So mm, do the volume calculations. I don't feel like doing it, but the difference is 56 cubed versus 57 cubed. And that's actually like non-trivial. Um, the next thing I don't like about the 354 is there I got a bunch of these cracks right there. So I actually took apart an edge to see what it's like. These shells actually hold together and they clip around the magnet, which is brilliant, brilliant design. 
Gans's engineering is so far ahead of every other company right now and oh geez that crack is going really far but I'm getting cracks all over here this thin plastic part where there it's retaining that black plastic and I think it's because Gans really pushed the engineering here to get the plastic so 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 thin that um, pretty much half my edges have cracks in them probably because TSA was a little rough they toss those bags around oh even my corners have cracks um, what I'm scared is over time maybe those cracks will propagate and these pieces will break but so far it's a great puzzle I use the yellow nuts um, I do all kinds of tricks but I could never get the same times I got with bigger cubes so if you have smaller hands this cube is wonderful magic I wish that Gans would make like a stickerless SM stickerless SM would be sick um, but yeah that's the 354 um, it's a decent cube um, so I'm working on some other projects that I'm hoping to finish uh, gotta make a bunch of sponsor cubes so for the blind people I'm making some GTS ones with a really 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 fast coating and the cool thing with the GTS one is like I can take off the caps and then just coat it all the way to the edge without having to use like excuse me gas phase it's so like on a normal cube I would take the compounds and use vapor deposition um, and then that would coat all the way to the edges but that process is slow it's expensive um, I have the equipment but um, it's not scalable for common people so some people heard about quick project quick so I consider project quick to be sort of obsolete um, because I think gamma treatment has a lot more potential uh, quick stands for quaternary internal coated cubes um, and the cool thing about quick was no two surfaces were the same plastic and in engineering you learn that like when you have two different plastics or two different materials hitting each other they have different friction coefficients so certain properties and certain materials when they're touching each other they synergize and become way better than they would by themselves for an example is um, a common thing in industry is brass on steel steel is a really hard metal brass is a soft metal and it's when you have motion and friction between those two brass actually self lubricates itself um, because it'll work its brass into the grooves and you have two fittings that work really really well with each other similarly with Rubik cubes or speed cubes uh, you can have similar things so I had like this is ridiculous I could still do this but there are flaws like it doesn't last very long um, at least in my opinion so I coated the corners with tiny microscopic fibers um, and this is actually a really 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 cool process if only it wasn't so difficult to do in big scale but I got these tiny tiny fibers to adhere to the plastic and then I had a really really smooth material coating the edges and the centers and then I had like um, a slower coating on the feet of the corners which was all of this is just absurd and then I put all of that in the one cube so every time it moved no two pieces had the same surface feeling and when you first used it for the first like uh, 200 solves the fibers made the plastic feel really really soft and nice um, to me after 200 solves it started smoothing down wearing out and it was like um, it wasn't even a linear decrease it was like once it starts flaking off a bunch of it just starts to coming off and I had issues with adhesion um, but uh, that was project quick I can actually coat any piece all the way to the edge and uh, have different surfaces for every place it touched um, but I think that's obsolete compared to project gamma because gamma can be scaled up gamma can be done on a big scale and the potential for gamma to absorb the plastics like to get the plastic to absorb anything well almost anything like a lot a wide range of additives I think that's the future because then you can modify it to however you want um, I just had to find that missing link so I went over by like 10 minutes. I was hoping to make like a five minute video, um, but that should be it. That's all the updates I have for Gamma, um, the dyeing project, 
um, a few other things, um, gave you some history, um, and yeah, um, so I also figured out a really cool magic trick. Um, you can make cubes disappear, and I'm going to show you how to do that in probably a week or two. So in a week or two, I'm going out to the country, and I have a special video coming up. Uh, we'll see how you like that. So that should be it. See everyone in the next video.